Metabolism interacts with literally every cell in the body. It brings in food and turns it into energy so that we can function. Mitochondria are arguably one of the most important components of our bodies and our cells. They take nutrients and turn them into energy. Without mitochondria, we would literally not have energy. On a very simple level, if your mitochondria are not functioning, you may struggle with brain fog, fatigue, weight gain, and many other things. So your mitochondria are incredibly sensitive to environmental cues. So excess stress, environmental toxins, poor metabolic function, these are all things that can compromise the function of your mitochondria. Insulin resistance refers to a situation in your body where your cells kind of go into a protective mode when there is excess nutrient or calorie around and essentially block glucose coming into the cell. And insulin, a hormone that is responsible for bringing glucose into the cell, has to work harder and harder to keep glucose stable. In a situation where you are insulin sensitive, your body can handle glucose that comes in, an insulin signal will be released, you swiftly bring in that glucose into a cell, and you pop out energy without any issues. When you are insulin resistant, your body may have some blockages on interacting with insulin that will compromise how well you make energy. Insulin resistance can be caused by foods, so focusing on foods that may be more processed, high in sugar, and or a lifestyle that is incredibly sedentary. We can improve our insulin sensitivity by being mindful about limiting our consumption of highly processed sugar, processed food generally, increasing our consumption of fibers, making sure we're moving on a regular basis, and getting good sleep and managing stress. It's important to not villainize carbohydrates because they are important and essential for our health as well. However, carbohydrates that are more processed or refined, so think a croissant or a juice, might be less favorable than a sweet potato or a whole grain bread. Metabolic syndrome is essentially a condition where people can struggle with between three or more of the following concerns. They may have elevated triglycerides, elevated glucose, low HDL, elevated waist circumference, or hypertension or high blood pressure. Considering 93% of Americans struggle with metabolic dysfunction, this is really important to look at. So when I think about metabolic health, I'm thinking about a few key markers. The hemoglobin A1C, a fasted glucose, a fasted insulin, a uric acid level. The difference between fasting glucose and A1C is the A1C is going to give you more of an average of your glucose over a period of time around two to three months, whereas a fasted level is giving you a static measure in the moment when you take that lab draw. A fasted insulin is a test that is done typically also after an overnight fast, and it is the amount of insulin that is required to keep your blood sugar stable. Now, what's interesting is if you are not eating any food overnight and grabbing that level, technically speaking, your insulin should be on the low hand if you haven't consumed anything. But if it is higher than we expect it to be as ideal, we know there may be some insulin resistance on board. So fasting insulin can give us a window into if you might be struggling with insulin resistance. The higher your fasted insulin is, the more that your body is working to keep glucose stable in the body, which is a communication that insulin resistance is on board. I would argue that fasted insulin is the most important early indicator of metabolic dysfunction because insulin is controlling your glucose. If you have metabolic dysfunction, your insulin may be creeping to keep your glucose controlled and you may find that your glucose is totally normal and your hemoglobin A1C is also normal, but your fasted insulin will give you the earliest clues that insulin resistance is starting. Uric acid is a byproduct of purine metabolism. It was historically thought of in conditions like gout but we now understand that it's a key player in the health of your metabolic system and also in your cardiovascular system. Increased levels of uric acid will put you at risk for cardiometabolic disease. Purines are breakdown products of protein. You'll find purines most commonly in animal protein as well as fish. So uric acid is 
increasing inflammation in the body, it's negatively impacting our cardiac health, our kidney health, and our metabolic health, putting us at risk for diseases. Uric acid has a direct relationship to blood pressure and may be the root cause for hypertension itself. If you have a high uric acid reading, the ways to improve that or decrease that uric acid level will be by, first of all, staying hydrated. Second of all, decreasing your consumption of fructose-rich items. So this could be your sugary drinks and sodas, alcohol as well, particularly beer, and decreasing your consumption of purine-rich foods, which would be your animal proteins, your red meat, as well as seafood. If you have a high fasted insulin level, I would recommend thinking about things like exploring intermittent fasting and really looking at your diet to see if you can eliminate processed sugars, highly refined sugars, and thinking about increasing more fiber and protein to balance out the carbohydrates you are eating. Stress and sleep have an impact in your metabolic health, specifically through the mechanism of cortisol. So as cortisol increases, this is a stress hormone that will actually tap the liver to say, we're stressed. And as a response, the liver will dump a bunch of glucose into the body, which to the body is glucose, whether from food or from stress. So managing both sleep and stress is very important in keeping your metabolic health sound. So if your A1C or your glucose is high, but your insulin is low, this is still a communication that there is dysfunction in the metabolic system. In the end, our bodies are not perfect machines. And so sometimes you'll see markers shift earlier than others, but in the end, we want all of these markers to be balanced to have good metabolic health. When I see a patient that has high glucose, high hemoglobin A1C, but a normal insulin, in the end, I still think of this as a form of metabolic dysfunction. Our bodies don't work like perfect machines, and even when we understand physiology, it may not kind of come out the way that we expected to, and this is still a communication that this system is out of balance and needs our attention. Luckily, many of the metabolic health markers like hemoglobin A1C, glucose, and insulin are quite movable. Now, this is not without effort, but if you are engaged and thinking about nutrition and lifestyle, you can actually reverse much of the dysfunction that can be seen in these situations. So if some of your metabolic markers are out of range, certainly in the early stages, you might struggle with insulin resistance, which could just be kind of like fatigue or cravings that you're dealing with. As this moves along, you may struggle with obesity or diabetes and or conditions that are related like polycystic ovarian syndrome or gout.